Okay, so we finally come to the first of our, our two big theorems that we end Calc 4 with. Uh, this one is the divergence theorem. So the divergence theorem states the following. Um, we're going to be probably a little bit careless with the setup, but um, it's all right. The main thing is to get the idea here. So, so F is going to be a continuously differentiable vector field. Okay, and we're going to have E, so E is going to be some closed bounded subset of R3. Okay, um, now probably I should be a little bit more careful about what kind of regions we're willing to consider here. Um, Basically, if this is something that we can do a triple integral over, we can probably consider it for the divergence theorem, right? Um, we could probably come up with some pretty ugly regions where things don't work out so nicely, but we, we never look at problems with those anyway, right? So for the types of problems that we consider in a course like Calc 4, the this regions in the vector fields that we deal with are going to be sufficient for the divergence theorem, okay? So the other ingredient is S. So S is going to be the boundary of E. So this is the boundary of E, and it's got to have this so-called outward orientation. Okay. So the picture that you should have in mind for this uh, for this whole thing is that you've got some sort of region in space, okay? All right, so it's some closed region. So it's a solid region, right? And the boundary is oriented everywhere with the outward pointing normal vector, right? So E is on the inside, S is the boundary of E, okay? So with, uh, with these definitions, we can state the divergence theorem, right? So the divergence theorem says that for a C1 vector field defined over some closed bounded subset of R3, uh, it says that the integral over the boundary of that vector field, so the flux across the boundary, if you like, um, is equal to the integral over E of the divergence. Okay? That's the divergence theorem. Okay, so the main, the main use that you're going to be using for this, right, the, where you're going to put this to use is you're going to be using this because um, you might be dealing with, let's say, a surface integral, which is difficult to compute, and you want to apply divergence theorem. Um, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe, maybe you have a volume integral that's difficult, and then you realize um, that the thing you're integrating is the divergence of some vector field, and for some reason this is an easy surface integral. Um, seems less likely that it'll work in that direction. Um, so, as a, as a quick example, remember that we, um, we did this example where E is the unit cube. Well, we were working with the boundary of E, so U, E is the unit cube, and we said that our vector field F was x, y squared, and then it was y, z squared, and then it was uh, z, x squared, okay? That was our vector field. Um, we worked out, in a previous video, we saw that the integral over the boundary of E of f dot ds 
we, we already computed that this integral was 1, right? But it's a fair amount of work because there are six faces, right? The cube has six faces. We had to do one, one integral for each face. Um, we found that um, the integral was 0 across three of the faces, one third across the other three. We added all up. We got a total value of 1. Um, so let's check that, see if this actually works with the divergence theorem. Well, what's the divergence of f? So the divergence of f is going to be, so we take the x derivative of the first component, so we get y squared. We take the y derivative of the second component, z squared. We take the z derivative of the third component, we get x squared. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared, okay? And we want to do the integral over e of the divergence, right? But our region is a cube, so this is, as triple integrals go, it's a relatively simple one. Okay. And dx, dy, dz. And I'll let you work it out. I don't think it's a good use of our time. Um, and also, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, we do the x integral here. We're going to get 1 third x cubed, xy squared, xz squared. So when we go from 0 to 1, we're going to get 1 third plus y squared plus z squared. Then we do the next one. That remains as 1 third. That becomes a 1 third plus z squared. Then we do the z integral, 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third, just like we were seeing before. Uh, we do indeed get 1 for that integral, right? And so this is kind of a standard use of the divergence theorem. Rather than doing a difficult surface integral, right, this one here, where you've got to integrate over six different faces, you turn it into a triple integral by taking a derivative, and you get a problem which is simpler to compute. Um, another thing that the divergence theorem does for you is it lets you actually understand what the divergence is telling you. Because one of the things that you can do is, is you, can, you can look at the divergence theorem in the context where you have some point, OK? You have a point in space. And around that point, you do a little ball, right? So we're going to call this, like, maybe it's an epsilon ball, right? So, so this is something which has uh, a radius of epsilon. It has a center at some point, x naught, y naught, z naught. And so basically what you can do is you can, you can kind of play around with this, right? And you can say, okay, well, you know, for for a C1 function, continuously differentiable, so the, the divergence is going to be continuous, um, you can make a continuity argument that says essentially that the divergence of f at this point, x0, y0, z0, um, it should look something like the limit as epsilon goes to 0 of, well, 1 over the volume, so 1 over, you know, like 4 pi, uh, 4 thirds pi epsilon cubed, something like that, 1 over the volume um, times the triple integral, right? And, and here, this is just this idea that as, as you shrink your region down to 0, you're sort of integrating over a point, right? Um, but you want to you wanna correct for the, for the volume. Um, I think you want to divide by the volume. I, yeah, this is kind of an averaging kind of mean value theorem type argument here, right? Um, and then, but then, of course, you, you have the divergence theorem on the other side saying, well, you know, this, this can be computed in terms of, I don't want to go through the details here, um, but that, well, this is actually, you know, this, this surface integral, right? Um, so you can, you can work things out. I'm, 
I could be remembering wrong. Maybe I don't actually want this. Um, the details aren't important. Uh, the idea here is that you can, with a bit of analysis that is maybe beyond what we want to do in this course, you, you know, this relates the divergence of your vector field to the flux across the surface, right? And, and it gives you this idea that we, we talked about when we first introduced divergence, um, that divergence is some sort of measure of how much of your vector field is either flowing in or flowing out of a given point, right? Um, this idea of having sinks and sources. Um, you, can, you can connect things up through the divergence theorem and, and finally make some physical sense of what's going on uh, in this integral. Um, but uh, this is only important if you really want to get into this kind of intuition of what divergence is all about. Otherwise, being able to do this sort of stuff is, is the main job for you. Okay, um, we'll do another example with divergence theorem. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to come back to Gauss's law, and then we're going to go on and uh, talk about Stokes' theorem. That's the last result that we need to cover.